Are you getting tired of these Batman mashups yet? As a quick recap, we've already done these. Batman and Venom. Batman and Green Lantern. Batman and Joker. Batman and the God of War. And Batman and Punisher. Even though that's not true, but I like to say that. Well, today we have Batman and Flash. Now, if you're new to this, this is actually comic-based. That's right, Flash and Batman merged in the Dark Knight Metal story. And that's what we're going to talk about today, because Prime One Studio did it again. They came out with an amazing statue that encompasses that storyline. And this is incredibly badass. Now, normally during my Flash reviews, I do some magic CGI like George... Okay, nothing like George Lucas, but like a low-budget, free iMovie person, where I'd make him skirt off the screen really fast. I can't do it with this one. It's just too big. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey, welcome to the Extreme channel. My name is Mr. X. This is Prime One Studios Red Death. So, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I love the Dark Knight Metal storyline. It's a fairly new storyline where the Justice League actually goes against a bunch of versions of Batman from different universes. You saw in the intro some of those different Batmans. This one is from Earth-52. So in Earth-52, all of Batman's different Robins keep getting killed because he's not fast enough. So he goes to Barry Allen and he says, hey, I need the Speed Force, I need your power. Barry Allen says, hell no. So Batman converts his Batmobile into a Speedmobile. And you see some of that in the statue here. We're going to talk more about that later. He straps Flash to the front of it, and they go into the Speed Force. Now when that happens, there's this huge corruption. Not only does Batman then get the Speed Force power, but Barry Allen's consciousness passes into him, and it corrupts Bruce Wayne into an evil, evil guy. And that is Red Death. He actually likes to kill people. One of the ways he can kill people is he turns them into Benjamin Button, where they die really, really fast. And then Batman Who Laughs, which is the Batman from our Earth, who got mixed with the Joker toxin, actually recruits him and says, hey, I can make everything better, but you have to help me bring this god Barbados. And that's how the whole storyline starts. Now within that storyline, a few different things happen. Barry's consciousness is actually still inside here and always convincing him not to do this evil, horrible stuff. And it actually comes out a little bit in the storyline. We're going to talk more about that later. But for now, let's just look at this guy and talk about the concept. And you know, what's interesting about all these pieces that Prime One Studios has been doing is this one, in my opinion, is different than most of the other ones. And there's a few different things with that. So we'll talk about that in the concept of the piece. And on the bottom here, they all have some type of museum-style sub-base below. That is no exception here. I don't know what this is in reference to, but it looks cool. But the base itself is that modified Batmobile. It's the front of it. You see burners on the back of it. And, of course, you see bats everywhere like we like to see in Batman statues. And skulls, because his name is Red Death. He likes to kill shit. Maybe these are people he turned into Benjamin Button. And if you haven't seen Benjamin Button... That's somebody who uh, has progressive aging or whatever that looks like. Or maybe he has the reverse of it. But nonetheless, he can make people turn really old really fast. What's really different about this one is that it has that elaborate base that's more of a conceptual part where the rest of them are more realistic. And then the other big part, he is in an action dynamic pose, which we typically haven't seen in this line other than one piece. And not only do we not usually see in this line, we usually don't see it in statues of this scale. This is one-third scale, three times smaller than a real-life version. He's starting to run. And I've talked about this in many Flash reviews. It's very hard to really capture the concept of speed within a statue. So, looks awesome. He looks evil. He has his red outfit on. And it's a mix between Flash, Batman's outfit, and then also just some evil cool shit. So, I love this concept. I think it's fantastic. I give it a 5 out of 5. It is very, very cool. I like how they incorporated the Batmobile on the front. And if you're wondering how he made the Batmobile really fast, he actually took parts from Flash's treadmill. You know, there's that age-old adage I've been saying in a lot of these reviews. that They always say Batman is the coolest or most undefeatable hero because if he has enough time to plan, he can beat everybody. 
All right, let's talk about the design of this piece. Now, when we talk about design, I talk about displayability, different display options. Does everything work together? Do I have any concerns about it? We talk about the dimensions. So we're gonna go through all that after the unboxing and assembly. Seems like all these one-third scale pieces come in two boxes nowadays, and they had the standard foam with the wax paper. So the first box here had actually two layers, quite a few pieces. Second layer had more of the flash, and the last box was just a big skull and the base. Now, as you saw, I was a little bit of a bitch to put the bats on. One of them I actually have setting on this uh, red piece right back here because I'm afraid it's going to fall. They've done that with a number of their pieces, like Batman Hush, this piece right here. These bats do seem a little bit more stable than that. Hopefully they are. But let's measure him. So the widest part of the base is about 17 inches. Obviously, the bat's sticking out at a few more inches. The deepest part of the base is 16. The thrusters in the back and then him over the top might add a little bit more. And it's not as tall as you think it would be. Um, it's right under 26 inches because he's so leaning over despite the fact he's on a really tall base. You can check out Comic Concepts website for the exact dimensions. That's where I buy my Primo Studio pieces. But Promo Studio made a few versions of this. So first of all, there is the regular version. All the versions come with this portrait right here, that's the regular. Then the exclusive version, which I have, has an additional portrait. You can check it out right here. But recently, and this one hasn't came out yet, Comic Concepts showed this variant, this gold variant right here, which is actually from the story. That's when he's hit with a bunch of good power and Barry kind of comes back but it's very short-lived in the actual storyline. I do have some concerns about the bats. They don't fit in the best, but they haven't fallen while I'm turning it, so that's a good thing. Otherwise, everything went together very well. I was a little bit worried that this one was gonna be too short, so I like, actually, that they elevated it so much so other statues won't block it if they're next to it. Now, if you wanna see where I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna do a room tour in the next 30 days, so make sure you not only like this video, but you sub to the channel and hit that bell notification Simply for the fact that almost everything has changed. I have the entire Dark Knight metal line displayed all together, and hopefully it looks badass. So the directions they gave weren't the best. I think that's a little bit of a negative. But otherwise, I can't find any issues with the design. I'm not too worried about leaning. If you saw me put it together, he actually doesn't key in with the foot. The entire rock keys in. That's all connected. So I, I'm not worried about that at all. A little worried about the bats based off recent history with Prime One Studio pieces. Little worried about the displayability, but not too much. So I think the design is a very strong four out of five. I almost give them a five out of five because they went really elaborate and I think they deserve some props for that. Paint and sculpt, I say this all the time. I probably reviewed over 50, probably more than 70 or 80 Prime One Studios are the company who made this, one third scale statues, particularly their DC. They do amazing. This one's not an exception. Let's take a look. What's really striking about him is that contrast of those red colors, which we're going to look at. So here is the Speed Force Batmobile or the rendition of it. Again, some type of small base. And I think it looks good. It has this uh, uh, texturing pattern. It's not even a pattern. This texture that's kind of raised up with some spikes on it. And then it transitions from that gray to the gold, almost like there's venting. And then engines and, and exhaust here. And then they have this colorful purple and uh, blue on the copper silver exhaust. I think that's pretty cool. Then even in the back here, and 
you got to remember this is stuff you don't normally see. They did a great job making uh, the illusion of fire from the engines, kind of that charred orange um, with the black ring around it. I like that a lot. It really complements the sculpt. The rocks look fantastic. I almost like how they feel like there's a flow of movement to them. Um, they're, they're smooth on one part and textured on another. Pretty cool. The bats are probably the weakest part, but I think that's pretty intentional. They wanted a matte contrast to the really shiny metallic silver. So I can get past that. Like if you look at them individually, they're not the best, but I think they flow really well with the rest of the statue. Interesting color they chose for the skulls. They really complement um, the uh, rock there. And then there's some uh, purple scorching on the bottom, but they did a great job. The actual sculpt of them is fantastic. Look like real skulls, almost have um, some faces on them as well. And then of course we have Red Death. So the red color, I don't wanna say it's a true red, it's almost like a maroon um, of this part of the suit, the non-metallic kind, but then it has the um, trim that's also kind of more of a pink color. So it's not the same metallic color you're seeing on the plated armor, which looks absolutely fantastic. And this is what really makes this, this piece pop. The gold one they have, I really wonder if it, it's gonna pop as much as this. But this looks great, so much detail. Look at two flash symbols, almost creating a bat symbol on the chest. You can see rivets in the armor where it's all plated together. These like kind of decrepit evil hands with long fingernails. This is just really impressive. And the portrait is no exception. See the bat wings as his uh, kind of ears, if you will, that are normally on the flash mask. And then that plating on the front. Now granted, this is based off the comic, but it still doesn't mean uh, that you can't recognize the badassery of it. The other portrait is great too. This one, you can see a little bit more of the eyes. I like that. I can't decide which one I like better. I think both are fantastic. So you can't even go wrong with just the collector's edition. I think I might like this one better, but it's, it's, it's a tough one. So this has more of a smooth, shiny head. Right here is more metallic. So great contrast, even though they're pretty similar. But both the paint and sculpt are done excellent. And I think that's, that's the case everywhere on here. I really like everything they did. Like I said, that's a little bit of an exception, but it just really adds that great contrast. And then of course we have the red wave, red streak on the back. I'm glad they didn't go a little more translucent resin, even though that's typically my preference, uh, because I think it would have looked a little strange. This just flows really well. It's, it's more the paint design that I'm a big fan of, uh, although the execution was excellent as well. Great anatomy on Red Death 2. He's not overly bulky. You can definitely see the muscles. Some of it's hard to tell behind the plating, but they did an overall fantastic job on the paint and sculpt. There were some muted tones on the base for the paint and the bats. I love this guy himself. Strong four out of five. I wish the bats could have been better. Sculpt even better than that. I absolutely love the sculpt of this. I think it is uh, fantastically done. Again, bats could have been better, but I'm not going to focus as much on them. It's a 5 out of 5 on the sculpt. Not perfect, but definitely up there for sure. So is the statue worth it? You know this Dark Knight metal line is very hard to figure out because not a lot of people like them. I love it. A lot of people think it's just mixing different characters together and that's stupid, but I think it comes from an awesome storyline. I think the statues look great. So really you got to know your audience. Prominent Studios made 600 of these. 350 were the exclusive with the two different heads. 250 were ones with just the one head that we looked at earlier. Retail was 1300 or 1350. If you bought it from somewhere like Comic Concepts like I did, you get a better price, you get cheaper shipping, and you get amazing customer service. Definitely check them out. The link in the description below it says where to buy statues. Click on that. Comic Concepts is one of the options. It's not an affiliate link. Just check them out. They have great prices, not only on Prime One Studio, but a lot of other studios as well. So thank you to Comic Concepts. I really appreciate this. But anyway, is that a good value? 
You know, this is a little cheaper than most one-third scale statues. It's pretty elaborate. I like that. But like I said, you have a targeted audience. I think both of these have low stock on Prime One's site. And again, check out Com Concepts, see if they have them. But I think this one would be more desirable than some of the other ones in the line, simply for the fact that Flash is pretty popular, especially when we have the new Flash movie coming. Well, granted, it won't have this storyline at all, even though the Batman is in it, Michael Keaton. That would be badass if they actually made a Dark Knight Metal storyline. If they did, the value on this would be 10 out of 5. But I think for now it's a 3 out of 5. I think I could get my money back pretty easy. I think most people collecting this line want them all, like me. But if you're only going to buy a few, you'd buy this one, Batman Who Laughs, maybe the Joker Dragon. And does this have the X Factor? Is this a 5 out of 5 statue? You know, I recently gave Dawnbreaker, the Green Lantern one, a 5 out of 5. If I give that a 5 out of 5, I think I have to this one as well, because I think this one's just as cool. The dynamic pose, the amazing paint and sculpt, very the cool concept on the base. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5 statue. I am loving this entire line, not only because they look awesome, but I think the storyline is pretty good, at least 90% of it. The ending is kind of eh. Kind of what my wife says about me in bed. We will be giving all of these statues away, plus additional ones, at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. Hey, thank you again to Comic Concepts, thank you to you guys for watching. Please drop me a like. Now i got to move this bitch without any of the bats falling. So give me a like for that. And again, throw down that comment. We're close to the 30,000 sub giveaway. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care of yourself.